So I have a question regarding expectations, because it seems like, especially in heterosexual couples, like your expectation wasn't to be like, oh yeah, this is this is the man of your dreams. Like how, how do those things evolve? Like does it mean that we, are we just compatible with anyone? Yeah, so specifically this guy did not meet any expectations that I had ever. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> We're still working on it as this, <laughs> Not even, this class did not meet any expectations. <laughs> That's so, true, too. Know. No, um, yeah, really, he did not fit what I was expecting, like maybe what I grew up thinking that was the right thing or how I would know if this was a person that I would be attracted to. Not, he didn't fit any of that. So it really, I really do feel challenged by wondering, could we just be connected to anyone? I think there is a lot more potential to build relationships than I think I thought when I was growing up. I think when I think now about the profile that I had, about somebody who was going to be X, Y, or Z, it was saying a lot more about my internal world than what I think I got, which was somebody who actually challenged my whole being and made me a better person person. I think relationships have the potential to expand us. And, so, and I think, though, that we want to just feel good. And really quickly, relationships don't make you feel good if they actually are real. They, and so it's really hard to know whether the not feeling good is because you have your own work to do or because it's not a relationship for you. It's really difficult. It's a razor's edge. I don't know what to say about expectations, except I don't take them so seriously. Especially when you don't know if it's just yourself or if it's just a relationship, because I don't know, I just went through something like that. And I'm not talking, I'm not you know, talking about things where you're like physically in danger. I'm just talking about that emotional level where you're like, oh, this is really hard. I don't like this. I want to have fun. And it's like, ooh. But there's a possibility here to build. I just wanted to know what your comments are on uh, compatibility and the limitations of compatibility and if you have anything to say about how we may or may not be compatible in things like race or religion or even uh, differences in wealth or just any other factors that we think sometimes shouldn't matter in compatibility, but maybe they do. What, do you, what can you say about that? Even, so even though Sam and I, it's funny, like we're both, you know, these white working class people and we look back, we're like, whoa, we actually come from a very similar background, even though New Jersey, Ohio, all this stuff. Honestly, when I look at Sam, I see an alien and I did see an alien. And so, <laughs> and I, and so your question is really like, it's so spot on because it's like we can get distracted really so anyway, the cultural, class, like sociological, all those categories are real, right? If you don't share the same cosmic belief systems, i.e. religion, whatever, that's a real thing. If you're constantly encountering these cultural moments because you all are, you know, are from different places, different cult, obviously those are real things. But I swear to you, like two humans of any kind trying to do a thing together, like a long-term relationship, is a ridiculous proposition to begin with. And so compatibility, mm. it's like there's so much potential for transformation in a real, in a, in a relationship, like any relationship, like we really affect each other and can affect each other because so many things can change. Compatibility is a really difficult thing. It's almost like you have to, it's more, it's less compatibility and it's more like an agree. Do we agree uh, uh, to do this thing together? Uh, no, no, no. Do we agree to be transformed together? in different, in ways that we can't predict at this point. Part of the compatibility, like you know that you're going to be able to transform together. You have to have that idea in your mind. I feel like yeah. there's limitations across cultures or even just different so, people that you can, you can see that you wouldn't be able to transform with a specific person. I don't know if you can see it, I think that what's a really good thing for, and, and, and I'm talking, and I think we're talking right now just about relationships that have an intention to have some lasting quality to them. So I'm just going to speak to, to that. And I think you can't really see if it's going to be possible. Like, I don't know that you can predict that. I think what you, what a relationship needs is a trial. I've seen many relationships, um, that had a really beautiful foundation, lots of, 
good love between them, but they didn't have a trial, you know, between them. They didn't have something that they really had to work through together. And so they didn't build, I'll say in this case, a marriage. The marriage is really like that experience of what do we do when we're really tested together? And that's where you see whether you're compatible or not, right? Because who knows who's compatible until you're actually in something together. And so I really do feel like it's not something that you can't, you like when you get it, but it actually really has the power to show you what compatibility actually is. Um, my question is just about like a relationship. So like obviously you guys have like a really healthy relationship and just curious like what advice you would give to like kids our age who think that they understand romance or like what do you guys do that makes like you work that allows you to do that? A commitment to, to learning and change, a commitment to transforming our minds, our thinking about everything, and which is kind of one of the things about this class. Sometimes people think that I'm committed to a particular thought or an idea or something, but any idea that I have and every moment that I'm talking ever, I know that I might not have that idea. As soon as it comes out of my mouth, I might change it because I'm always ready to change and, be, and transform. And so in a, in a relationship, I'm always ready to change and be transformed. There's nothing that I, I have a certain personality, but I could have the opposite personality next week, which would be awesome. And, th and that the idea that that would be awesome, I could live a different life. And so I think that that's the, that's the commitment. The commitment is to the transformation. The commitment was to love, and what that actually mean, meant is that we were willing to talk about anything and say anything, and not just be in the, ooh, I can't, ah, I gotta make sure I get you a birthday present, because birthdays are a thing. Like, it'd be like, wait, birthdays aren't a thing for me. They're a thing for you. We need to talk about that, like that. Just like, whatever it is, or like, I don't like when that happens, or I love this instead of, no things that are off limits, and no, bullshit that's like oh let's pretend that this is great no 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 it's like love will not survive with the, if with pretending and so it's just like no pretending and that means all the things we were socialized to believe uh, we have to we can't hold on to them if they don't serve the higher purpose of love